Hello and welcome to our next session. Today we are going to be looking at requirement determination in SDRC. Now one thing that we need to note is that the requirement determination is the most critical aspect within the SDRC. And why do we say this? You realize that from research around 37% of all the software projects they normally fail to meet user needs and the user needs comes from undertaking the requirement determination correctly so this is a phase that is critical this is a stage that is critical that should warrant more attention to it so requirement determination is performed so that we are in a position to transform what referred to as uh, the high level statements of a business requirements into a bit more realistic, precise, detailed list of what the new system ought to do so that it can provide the needed value to a business. Let's take an example. When you have a client stating that the new system should eliminate inventory stockout, this is a high level statement. But we need to transform this high level statement into a more detailed list of what the new system ought to do and that's what we are going to see under the requirement determination how do you transform uh, this particular statement into a more detailed uh, list of what the new system should be in a position to do what's a requirement so requirement is a statement of what the system must do or what characteristics the system needs to have so all through we are going to be looking at this scenario that we want a system that helps us to eliminate inventory stockout now we normally have different types of requirements one that describes what the business needs we refer to that as a business requirement and we are going to see examples of them we may have a requirement that describes what the user needs to do or what the user must do. We refer to them as user requirements. We have other types of requirements that describes what the software should do. We refer to them as functional requirements. We have other types of requirements that describe the characteristics that the system ought to have. We refer to them as non-functional requirements. And lastly, we have requirements that describe how the system should be built. We refer to them as system requirements. We begin with the first one, business requirement. The business requirement will describe the reason for proposing that system development project. And of course, this comes from the system request. So the business requirement is going to define what are the overall goals of this particular system. It focuses on what the system ought to do so that it can satisfy the business user needs. When you're looking at this example, that the new system should eliminate inventory stockout. What are the business requirements? So from a business requirement point of view, we expect that the new system that is going to be built will help increase our market share, so we'll have more dominance. It's going to help us to shorten the order processing time, maybe from a week to a day. It's going to reduce the customer service costs. It's going to lower the inventory spoilage. It's going to improve the responsiveness to customer service requests. It's going to provide account access to mobile customers. You can see all these are business requirements. When you look at user requirements, they describe the tasks that user needs to carry out as part of the business operations. For instance, a user should be in a position to schedule a client appointment. A user should be in a position to place a new customer order. A user should be in a position to reorder inventory. A user should be in a position to determine what's the available credit. 
a user should be in a position to look up account balances. So you can see that all those examples are the tasks that a user is performing as an integral part of the business operations that we have just talked about in a short while. Functional requirements. So the functional requirements are the requirements that define how the system will support a user in completing a particular task. So for example, determine client availability. So we have listed a number of uh, user requirements. We pick the first one, for example, schedule a client appointment as a user requirement. So how does the functional requirement assist in scheduling a client appointment? So the functional requirements that we can generate from that user requirement are one, the system will help us to determine the client availability. The system will help us to find which are the available openings that are matching the client availability. The system will help us select the desired appointment. The system will help us record the appointment as well as confirm the appointment. And all these five functional requirements will cumulatively help us to achieve this scheduling a client appointment. System requirements describe how the system will be implemented in terms of the hardware requirements or the needs, in terms of the softwares that we need, and so on and so forth. We have another category which we refer to as non-functional requirement. These are the characteristics in terms of quality attributes, in terms of the design, in terms of the implementation constraints, in terms of the external interfaces that a system ought to have. And the non-functional requirements affect the performance as well as the usability of a system. They are normally broken down into four categories. We normally have operational non-functional requirements. So this generally refer to as the physical, the technical environment in which we expect our system ought to operate. For example, you may say that your system should be in a position to run on all types of devices, be it smartphones, be it laptops, be it tablets, and so on and so forth. You may also talk of that your system will be in a position to integrate with other systems. It could be either an m -Pesa, it could be either existing with a, an existing inventory system, and so on and so forth. In terms of performance, we look at the speed within which your system is able to operate, the capacity in terms of reliability. So for example, you want a system that uh, is available 24-7, that is the reliability. You want a system that is able to accommodate uh, maybe 300 users at a go. You want a system where the interaction between a user and a system should not exceed two seconds. So those are in terms of performance. Then we have another category chart to our security. And in this given case, you're looking at who has access in your system and what circumstances warrant that particular access. So for example, you might state that on, customers can only see their order history within business hours. You might state that your system has available safeguards from all different types of uh, attacks. Then we have cultural and political non-functional requirements. So in this given case, we are looking at the legal requirements that might affect how the system operates. For example, we know we have things like the Data Protection Act. So your system should align to the Data Protection Act. You may have other scenarios, for example, that your system being in a position to determine or to distinguish between different forms of currencies. Or your system being in a position to categorize or accommodate different tax uh, that are enforced within a country, and so on and so forth. A quick question. Among the six items, which of these is not a non-functional requirement? And the ones that uh, 
have a red font color are the ones that are not non-functional requirements. The first one, the second one, and the third one, they are non-functional requirements. We now have something that was a requirement definition statement, which is a text report that normally lists down the functional as well as the non-functional requirements in an outline format. Let's take an example of a vehicle dealership system. Remember we said that the functional requirements, they normally support a user. So it's from the user requirements that we normally generate the functional requirements. So let's take a scenario of the first one here. We have a user requirement that allows a user to manage new vehicles. So out of that particular user requirement, we can generate three functional requirements that helps a user to achieve that ability that they can manage new vehicles. So the system will allow the managers to view the current new vehicle inventory. The system will allow the new vehicle manager to place orders for new vehicles. The system will record the addition of new vehicles where they are received. The second user requirement is that the system is supposed to help a user to manage sales. So which are the functional requirements that we can pull from that given user requirement? You will see that the system will enable the user to create a customer offer. The system will allow, and I want us to be clear on how we are stating these functional requirements. Because we are saying that it's the system that is supporting the user to achieve a certain task. So in this given case, we ought to begin by the use, the system will, the system will, the system will. So the system will enable the salesperson to create a customer offer. So we expect that when you go to a system, we should be in a position to see this. The system will allow salesperson to know whether an offer is pending on a specific vehicle. The system will enable managers to record approval of a customer offer. The system will prepare a sales contract. The system will prepare a shop, a shop work order based on customer required dealer options. The system will record a customer deposit. The system will record a customer payment. The system will create a record of the customer vehicle purchase. Now we have another user requirement where the user is able to manage used vehicles. And in respect to that, the system will record the information on a customer trading vehicle. Let's look at the non-functional requirements. Now we say the non-functional requirements are four of them. We have operational, performance, security, cultural, and political. So in terms of operational, we can say that the system should run on tablet PCs so that salespeople can use. So we expect that the system should be able to interface with the shop management system. Maybe there is a POS. The system should be able to connect to printers wirelessly so that we can print the contracts and so on and so forth. In terms of performance, we are saying that the system should support at least uh, 15 salespeople. The system should be updated with the pending offers on vehicles every 15 minutes so that we don't have one more than one person who is making an offer on the same vehicle. So in terms of security, no salesperson can access another salesperson customer contacts so that you don't end up stealing a customer from your other salesperson. In terms of security, only the owner and the sales manager can approve a customer offer. In terms of security, the use of each tablet should be restricted to the salesperson to whom it is assigned. You can see how we are able to now put the non-functional requirements. In terms of cultural, we say that the customer policy is that all com computer equipment have to be purchased maybe from a particular dealer. The customer personal information should be protected in line with the Data Protection Act and the system will conform to the state's lemon law. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.